Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Council of Trent podcast. I'm your host, Catholic Answers apologist and speaker, Trent Horn. Today, I want to focus on the single question that I think is most helpful when it comes to resolving the issue of transgender identity. So when I talk about other moral issues, I find it's important to focus the discussion on a key question or a central question. So take the issue of abortion, for example. It would be easy to get sidetracked and talk about adoption and government programs to provide for the poor and overpopulation. And I try very hard to not get sidetracked by that. Instead, I always bring the discussion back to one question. What are the unborn? If the unborn are human beings, then abortion can't be justified. If the unborn are not human beings, then abortion needs no justification. Who cares? I think it's that's also important when it comes to the issue of transgender identity, that it's easy to be distracted to talk about all of the ancillary issues surrounding it, uh, educating children, bathrooms, locker rooms. Those issues are important, and we do need to be able to talk about them. But it's easy to either get heated in these discussions or to worry about offending people or being offensive to people and not speaking up at all. So we need to be compassionate yet assertive. So we shouldn't be just dismissive. Uh, I think it's important to make a distinction between uh, the advocates, the people who advocate for transgender ideology on media, in universities, that some of them can be over the top in their rhetoric and their language. And separating that from the average person who has gender dysphoria, who feels like they are trapped in the wrong body. And to have compassion upon that person, but compassion does not entail uh, feeding into a false sense of identity. So someone who has anorexia, for example, to be compassionate towards them is not to agree with their mistaken sense of identity in thinking that they are obese and they need to lose weight when they're actually underweight. So someone who has gender dysphoria, helping them does not mean, oh, you're a man who says you're a woman. Yeah, you're definitely a woman. Let's let's help you do surgery to more correspond to that idea. That actually would not be a loving thing. So how do we focus a conversation? I think the best way to focus a conversation is focus on one question. So when it comes to the issue of transgender identity, this is the question that I would focus on. What is a woman? Or what is a man? Another So there's different ways of uh, framing this one question. You could say, what is a woman? Or what is a man? Another way to frame it is, what is the difference between men and women? And that is a question that transgender advocates just cannot answer. I know online one person who has put this to good effect is Matt Walsh. So Walsh on his Twitter page, when he engages transgender advocates, he'll ask them these questions and he can never get a straight answer out of them. Because when you try to offer an answer, it reveals that transgen- the entire transgender identity, this sense of it being a real identity that's objective that other people must assent to, is ultimately incoherent. And we know it's incoherent because transgender advocates are adamant that men and women are not the same. If you call a transgender man a woman or a transgender woman a man, or if you use the wrong pronoun, you're accused of being transphobic. On social media sites, you can be deplatformed. If you tell a transgender individual, uh, and I'll show multiple evidence of that here in today's episode, if you say to a transgender individual, no, you are not a woman, you are a man, or use the incorrect pronoun, uh, you can be met with a very emotional response. Here's an example of a transgender woman or a biological man being referred to as sir instead of ma'am at a GameStop. Uh, So here's an example of that. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am, once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. It was a general. Right beforehand, you said sir. Sir? Mother take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a sir. Now, whenever I see examples of things like this, I just, I feel a sense of sadness because someone who is suffering from gender dysphoria, they have a lot of hurt and pain, and it's understandable, though not acceptable, that they would lash out at people in public. So I don't want to dwell on uh, bad behavior or anything like that. But the the point I want to make is that transgender advocates, they are firmly set. Men and women are not the same, but they don't define what a man is and a woman is. So how do they know 
they're not the same thing. It would be like getting mad. It says it'd be like if somebody told you that you're not from New York, you're from the Big Apple, and you got mad. You're like, I am from New York. I'm not from the Big Apple. Well, New York and Big Apple refer to the same city in New York State with the Empire State Building in it. Uh, they're, they're basically the same thing. It's like the morning star and the evening star. Those terms both refer to the planet Venus. But we know man and woman do not refer to the same thing. They refer to different things. So how do we know they refer to different things? Well, their meanings are different. Well, what are their meanings? That gets us back to the main question. What is a man? What is a woman? In defining it, because the problem is when you define what a woman is, you are going to indirectly define what is not a woman. And under transgender ideology, anybody who says they're a woman is a woman. Anyone who says they're a man is a man. You can't exclude anyone who makes those claims. So that's why the other side is very hesitant to want to define these terms. But if they can't define them, it seems like they don't really exist. I'll give you a few examples of where transgender advocates just have a, a, a prickly pair of a time. Is that an expression? It should be. Uh, defining it. Here's uh, Joe Swinson. She was the former leader of the Liberal Democratic Party in the UK. So she's on a radio show, asked this question, and here's her response. It's really great that your party promotes women's rights. Uh, so please, can you tell me what a woman is? Uh, um, well, I, I know I'm a woman, and uh, uh, and I think we we do, we, we know... Uh, what what we are, and I think all women are um, important, and their rights need to be protected. Uh, whether they are cis or trans, whether they have a disability, what? we are we are all important in all of those uh, different ways. And Prager, you actually went out and interviewed a bunch of college students, asking them what is a woman, and they got similarly vague, evasive, or poetic answers that don't really make sense. How would you guys define a woman? There is no like certain definition of a woman. Strong, independent, um, free. Anybody who identifies himself with the term a woman. I feel like gender is pretty fluid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think you need to define any stuff, like anything like that. I don't really like to label things, you know, just uh, a woman, you know, women have their parts, but I feel like, you know, they could be whatever they want to be, you know? Do you think that I could be a woman? If you wanted. So this isn't just a gotcha moment, though. It's a real philosophical problem for people that want to defend this uh, transgender identity. Now, some people might turn around and say, OK, smart guy, you do better. You define a man and a woman. And what they'll do at this point is they'll try to point out instances where you have intersex or chromosomal anomalies where we're not sure. And then they'll try to cast doubt on the whole idea that men and women are separate or that we can define them objectively. I mean, my definition would be simple. A man, when it comes to human beings, a man is a human being ordered towards the act of impregnation. And a woman is a human being ordered towards the act of gestation or being pregnant. So you're just going to take it all down to pregnancy? Yeah, <laughs> because we can find biological sex in other animals. One animal in the species impregnates. The other animal is impregnated or their eggs are fertilized, uh, you know, whatever it may be. We see this in all other kinds of non-human animals. The same is going to carry over to human beings. That's the basic biological difference. Now, of course, if a man is unable to have sex, if he's impotent, or if a woman is unable to become pregnant, she's infertile, she doesn't stop being a woman and the man doesn't stop being a man. The definition is, what are you naturally ordered towards? So for example, I cannot become pregnant. Now, I can't become pregnant. Someone could take an embryo and put it inside me, and it would grow. You could maybe call it a pregnancy, but it's not a natural pregnancy. I can't naturally become pregnant. But I'm not infertile because of that, because I'm a man. I'm not a woman. And so that's why these biological definitions of manhood and womanhood are helpful, but you've got to remember to talk about naturally ordered towards, not just if you can become pregnant, you're a woman, because there's women who cannot become pregnant yet, they're children, or they can't become pregnant anymore, they're past menopause. But what are you naturally ordered to within the act of reproduction itself? I think that's the most workable definition, but some people will bring up other issues to try to muddy the waters, especially different chromosomes we have. So I want to play with you a clip where Ben Shapiro is uh, enga is engaged on a panel with Dr. Drew and others. The person sitting next to him is a transgender woman, is a man. I think his name is Zoe. 
Uh, he was the helicopter pilot who filmed the O.J. Simpson chase and then later identified as transgender. And so they have a heated moment in the discussion. But there's something that Zoe says in the midst of it I want to focus in on. So I'm just going to play the clip because it's also evidence that once again, if you say a transgender woman is a man, well, you, you look, look what will happen to Ben Shapiro. Are we mainstreaming delusion? Uh, it's not delusion. Why, it's why not would delusion. you call it delusion? Because... Bruce Caitlyn Jenner, I'll call him Caitlyn Jenner. No, because it's that's her. The, You're not being polite to the pronoun. Because disrespect. It, okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male, with the exception of some of his sperm cells. You it turns out that his sperm cells are male. Wait, I need. It to. turns out that he still has all of his male appendages. But, How but, he feels on the inside is irrelevant but, to the question of his biological sex. I'm not, I don't I, agree with that. Excuse me, the chromosomes within we our both know nuclei. The yeah, chromosomes go ahead. don't necessarily mean you're male or female. Gender. With gender. Gender of identity. Go ahead. No, so. Especially what, but even so, you have a thing like Kleinfelter's syndrome. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics or well, not? Well, no, what no, are your no. genetics? I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. <laughs> you cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. If I told somebody who said that the Eucharist was a cracker or made a, a blasphemous joke that they're going to go home in an ambulance, well, I think you'd go to the hospital in an ambulance, but you, know, you get the point. If I threaten somebody with harm because they misidentified the Eucharist or Christ or something I held dear, I would be considered a religious fanatic, even though that is a core element of my belief system. It's something I value very highly and beca can become emotional about. Yet the decorum of civil society maintains that we don't threaten people with violence just because they disagree with very important beliefs that we hold. And more and more, people are thinking that, well, when it comes to these particular issues, that rule uh, doesn't hold true anymore. But what um, this gentleman did bring up, though, he did say, well, look, it's complicated. There's Kleinfelter syndrome. Whereas Ben is saying, look, genetics, it's very clear. And you might fall into this trap, but I don't want you to. Some people might say to you, well, what's a man? What's a woman? Well, a man is a human being with an XY sex chromosome pair. And a woman is anyone who has an XX chromosome pair. Not a good path to go down. I say ordered towards impregnation uh, gestation. The reason I do that and I don't just do chromosomes is because there are people who have chromosomal abnormalities within their sex chromosomes. So I want to go through them here briefly so you're not caught off guard by them so you can talk about them and say that even people that have these uh, variants in their sex chromosomes, in their DNA, that doesn't disprove the fact that 99.999% of the time, we can identify someone's a man and someone's a woman, even if they had different chromosomes. So let me, I'll give you some examples. So just to recap, 46XX, that's female. 46XY is male. You get an X from your mom and you get an X or a Y from your dad. So your dad, those genes are what kind of decide if you're going to be a, a man or a woman. XX, 46, traditionally female. XY, 46, traditionally male. Sometimes, though, the sperm might be empty, might not have a chromosome. So you only get one X from your mother. You would be 45X. That's Turner syndrome. About one in 2,500 people have it. These are biological females. They're women, but they have short and webbed neck, low hairline at the back of the neck. They're short in stature. Uh, they have uh, stunted development. They deal with infertility issues, uh, lack of secondary sex characteristics, uh, but it's still a, a biological female. Uh, you might get sometimes an extra X. So you might have 47 triple X. Uh, it's not adult entertainment or anything like that. It's all it's trisomy X, one in 1000 people. Uh, they don't just have their biological females, but they have three X's instead of two. And they rarely show any symptoms that you could have. 47 triple X and if you're a woman and, and not know it actually. Uh, the next one is what uh, Zoe brings up and that is 47 XXY. That would be if you got an X, if you got an X and a Y from your father, you would have Kleinfelter syndrome. These, these are biological males. They're biological males affects one in 500 people. And it's kind of the mirror version of Turner syndrome, but for men. So you deal with um, small in stature, uh, fertility issues, uh, might have poor motor coordination, weaker muscles. Uh, so that would be XXY, Kleinfelter. Uh, it's just stunted masculine growth in biological males. Okay, but it's still 
These are men. If you have Kleinfelter, you're a man. If you have Turner, you're a woman. Uh, you have 47XYY. Uh, that would be, sometimes I've heard it called super male syndrome. You have an extra Y, two Ys, about one in a thousand. Uh, these are biological males. Uh, not too many variants. You might be taller, have acne, learning disabilities, might affect your fertility, but biological males, 47XYY, super, uh, y, super chromosome, super Y, super male, I mean. I think that's super male. Uh, tetra, uh, tetrosomy X, 48 quadruple X. So this would be uh, in the meiosis, the dividing of the sex cells. You get four Xs instead of two. These are biological females, but uh, there's varying severity of the intellectual disabilities this causes. About one in 50,000 people have tetrasomy X. Biological females with heart defects, skeletal anomalies, intellectual disabilities. Uh, 48 triple X Y, about one in 50,000 people have this. These are biological males, uh, and they tend to have issues with their height and their teeth. Uh, 48 double X double Y, biological males, one in 30,000. So when you have the Y chromosome, specifically the SRY gene on the chromosome, that is what controls for, for masculine development. So even in these anomalies, the presence of a Y almost in every case tells us that this is a biological uh, male. Um, so 48 double X, double Y, developmental delays, you might have, sometimes might be connected to autism. Uh, 49 quadruple XY, also called Fracaro syndrome. These, now we're getting to the really rare ones here. One in 100,000 people have it. The symptoms are just similar to Kleinfelter, stunted development in biological males. Still we're dealing with, we can, we can sort biological male, or female, okay? 49 uh, septuple, what would be for five? Uh, pen, pent pentosomy, uh, pentuple X. There's five Xs. If you have five X chromosomes, which is a lot, uh, that's pentosomy X, about one in 150,000 people have it. These are biological females, all X chromosomes. These, syndrome, these symptoms are similar to what you might find in someone with Down syndrome or trisomy 21. You have an extra... Uh, 21 chromosome. All right, so let's recap. Transgender advocates cannot answer the question, what is a man, what is a woman? Because it's totally subjective. But we know men and women are not the same thing. The biological definition is superior, but you got to be careful here because biology can be a bit quirky. I like men are ordered towards impregnation. Women are the ones who are ordered towards gestation, even if they can't become pregnant yet, or they can never become pregnant or can't get pregnant again. What are you ordered towards biologically? Most of the time, our chromosomes do tell us this. XX for women, XY for men. But just because there are chromosomal variations, we can still tell in, like I said, 99.999% of these cases, whether we have a biological male or a biological female. There are the cases, though, that these are focusing on is intersex, where you have ambiguous genitalia, where you have chromosomal anomalies. Uh, but here... The vast majority of people who identify as transgender are not intersex. They are XY or they are XX. But even still in these difficult cases, we can still do the investigation and find out if the person is a biological male or a biological female. Uh, even So when people bring up Kleinfelter or Turner, just say, well, those are women with a developmental disorder or men with a sex chromosome variation. Uh, the only examples that might be different are La Chapelle syndrome. This is XX that has the SRY gene from the Y chromosome, so they develop masculine characteristics as well. I read in the literature a case of someone who is XX, but they had chromosomal mosaicism, so they had elements of the Y chromosome within the X chromosomes, and so they were X, uh, sorry, they were XY, but they were able to become pregnant. So they're XY, but they were able to carry a pregnancy to term. There's only this one case I've been able to find and when we find cases like this, I would say the outliers do not uh, disprove the general rule, okay? Here, we've got weird issues of, of chromosomes and genes intermapping with one another. It would be like that there are cases with brain death. There was an individual named TK who was completely brain dead, but was able to still uh, live, process nutrients, and continue to grow and live for decades. He, he was on a ventilator and a feeding tube. But he was not, he didn't decompose. He continued to live even though he was brain dead. But the vast majority of the time, it's pretty clear when you're brain dead, when you're total, have total brain death, you're dead. So just as the case of TK 
is a strange, unusual brain death case does not show we have no idea if people are alive or dead. We have no idea who's alive and who's dead. That weird anomaly with brain death cases doesn't disprove the general universal binary between life and death. The weird, weird cases in the medical literature of someone who's XY and becomes pregnant because they have chromosomal mosaicism, that weird single isolated case does not disprove the universal binary. There are men, there are women, they are, they are, those two roles are required for sexual reproduction in a species. Men's role is they are the ones ordered towards the impregnation. Women are the ones who are ordered towards the gestation. And XXXY almost maps, you know, in 99.5% of, of the cases that are involved. So that's how I would respond to the question, what is a man, what is a woman? It's important for you to know this and the anomalies that people try to try to stick you on that. But ultimately, point back to the other person and say, look, even if you find one case in the medical literature that's a difficulty for my view, one case, your view can't explain anything. It's completely incoherent. To say a man is anyone who claims they're a man and a woman is anyone who claims that they're a woman means the terms man and woman are meaningless, even though you are offended if I call you by the wrong term. So the transgender view simply cannot make sense at all. The biological view of being male or female does. And that view ultimately comes rooted in the fact that God made us, uh, Genesis chapter one, he made them male and female in his image. No matter who you are, uh, you are a son or daughter of God made in the image and likeness of God. God loves you. There is a reason you're here. If God, the only reason you're here is because God willed it to be so, and he desires eternal life for you. And that means all of us have to accept God's offer of salvation, repent from sin, and we have different crosses to carry in life. For some people, it may be the cross of gender dysphoria or some other kind of identity disorder. So our role, those of us who don't carry that cross, is to help other people to carry it. And we do that by not being mean or snarky uh, or cruel, but also not by giving into and indulging a false identity that is hurtful to people. So I hope that is helpful for you all, and I hope you all have a very blessed day. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to help us produce more great content like this, be sure to click subscribe and go to trenthornpodcast.com to become a premium subscriber. You'll help us create more videos like this and get access to bonus content and sneak peeks of our upcoming projects.